Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today is another part in the learning how to live alone series where I not only talk about sustainability and how I incorporate sustainable habits into my daily routine but I also talk about mental health, learning how to live by myself as the title implies. When I moved into my own apartment, I decided to do this series to share more vulnerable parts of my everyday life, but also to talk about sustainability in a more grounded way. So this is just everyday things that I do and think about and talk about. Honestly, this series is some of the most enjoyable content to make and I don't think I'll ever stop making it. I think there is definitely a space for content like this where we're not only talking about these things that we can do, in theory, but this is sort of more like real life things where we have to balance sustainability and mental health and enjoying life and thriving and being with friends and dating and all this kind of thing. Because I'm not only a zero waste and a vegan, there's a lot more to it. So let's get right into the video. Um, but before we do that, this video is sponsored. Da, 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 da. This video is sponsored by Fairphone and Fairphone is one of my all time favorite brands to follow to see what they're doing because they are really trailblazers when it comes to sustainable tech. I made a video with them about the impact of smartphones a while back, back in autumn. So go and check that out where I'm also interviewing their CEO. But this time we're talking about a brand new product that they just launched this month and it's the Fairbuds XL. Now 548 million headsets are produced every single year and most of them are produced to be thrown away rather quickly. And a mere 17.4% of all electronics and tech is actually recycled. The, the bar's on the floor, the bar is on the floor. They're typically designed to be discarded once they break and not be repaired and Fairphone is definitely changing that up. Now the Fairbuds XL is made from recycled and ethically sourced material and workers are actually also paid a living wage bonus for their labor. These bad boys contain vegan leather and 100% recycled plastic and aluminium. You can take it apart, repair it and put it back together and you can find spare parts on Fairphone's app and website. So it's incredibly accessible to actually take your tech apart. It's designed to be repaired at home by you. And Fairphone has been in the business of combating overconsumption and plant obsolescence in the tech industry for years, not only through their own products, but also by sharing knowledge with competitors because it's about turning the entire industry and mindset regarding our electronics around and not only improving just one brand. I've had the headset for a while now sort of trying it out seeing how I like it and I can just say I love it. They've been designed to withstand both wind and weather and they're incredibly comfortable to wear and the sound is also fantastic. Thank you so much to Fairphone for sponsoring this video. It's always such a pleasure to see what they come up with because they're really just front runners in terms of sustainable tech. So thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the living alone part. Hello guys. So today in a couple of hours, two of my friends are gonna come over and we are going to have like a tapas night. I think we started out wanting to do like tapas, small dishes. I think we're moving into half tapas, half pasta. Anyway, the theme of the night is cocktails inspired by our celebrity crushes. I'll be here in an hour, an hour and a half or something like that. So I have a little bit of time to do some work before they arrive. And this is the dress I'll be wearing today. I got this recently in a thrift store. It's super nice and flowy and comfortable and it's also really elegant. So I really, really like it. Casual Grogu in the background. In advance, I would like to apologize for this next part of the video. This cocktail night became slightly unhinged. You have been warned. Vanya just arrived and can you describe your outfit for me? Um, it's giving Pedro Pascal at the Met. <laughs> Show me that slutty knee. What? <laughs> This is the Stanley Tucci inspired Negroni, served for his lovely wife Felicity. Are you Felicity? You know I am Felicity, <laughs> thank you so much, I'm Felicity. Look at that, there we go. Ooh. So this is uh, based on Chris Pine and it's a triple pine. So we have a gin and tonic with pineapples, so you got the pine from Pineapples, then you get the pine from the tonic, and then pine nuts. So we have nuts. These nuts. <laughs> That's wow. 
Presentation. Pre Yay. It's so beautiful. Look at it. Ooh. I am asking the environmentalist question right now. Is this Mica? It's, it's like, I appreciate a good aesthetic, babe, and you know that I love you. I just really want to know what this is. <laughs> this was I, in Croatia. I know. So I can tell. I will not say. If someone in the comments can tell me if <laughs> it says what the glitter is, I would be really happy. I assume it's safe to eat, not good to eat. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? Daddy is a state of mind, ladies. That's why our blueberry sours are inspired by the one and only Pedro Pascal from his Vanity Fair interview. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Can I just see this? Daddy is a state of mind. You're insane. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> mustache is, and I actually drew this from Pedro Pascal's mustache. You just know it was a good night when you come out the next morning and your kitchen looks like this. There's even just a chocolate spread out on the table with a knife in it. Yeah, um, I have some cleaning up to do now. Look who is here. Uh, and she goes straight for the camera as always. Ah, oh, it's moles. She's back. I mean, for a short while, but actually it's just a cameo. Hello, moles. Excuse me while I sit on my kitchen floor. So a little bit of an explanation. I live in the same building as some of my friends. I've mentioned this several times and they are taking care of moles while Jens is on a business trip right now. Now Jens and I are fine. We are not angry with each other, not anything of the sort. Very, very chill. We're still collaborating on the house and everything. So I'm taking care of moles for a couple of days while my friends who are actually taking care of her had to go somewhere. Um, so now I'm taking care of her and honestly, I am so excited. I've seen her a couple of times, but I haven't been with her alone or anything like that since I moved out. She's just napping. It's super nice to have her. I just took her to the farmer's market for a little walk as well. And yeah, we're just having a good time chilling. I also have a couple of things on the agenda for the next couple of days. Things that I want to include you guys in as well. I have some things that I've been postponing forever. So I feel like doing it in a video is a really good way to sort of hold myself accountable. So I have some clothing that I need to fix because it's been broken several small places. So I'll need to fix that. And then I have to install my bidet. It's been ages. It's I haven't done it yet. It's dumb. Now I need to do it. Uh, so yeah, we are doing that. Both those things we're doing in this video because otherwise I fear I'll never get it done. Also because I'm not home a lot right now. But I don't know why she looks this defeated. I was just putting some more things into my Bokashi compost and I wanted to show you the juice. I'm going to use this to water my plants. This is a really good stuff. I already used another fertilizer in my hydroponic system here, but look how well my basil is thriving. I'm also making pasta today, so I'm going to cut off the very top so they can grow outwards and not just upwards. But this is looking really nice. Let's not talk about my sage and this uh, oregano because they're looking a little... Oh no, um, so I'll move them away from the sunlight in a sec. I'm also doing basil over here and I'm using the Bokashi fertilizer over here, so um, stay tuned for that. There is so much trial and error when it comes to what works and what doesn't work. I've seen so many people say that these and these and these types of fertilizers work really well under these conditions and I've had complete opposite experiences. So I'm just trying things out and, and uh, then I observe what happens uh, and I write it down which makes it science. Remember in one of my previous living alone videos that I had a boudoir shoot. I talked a little bit about it, didn't show it all too much. I have the poster. It's ready and it's hanging in my apartment. Yeah. The picture is up in my hallway and I love it. Here's the hallway, here's the fire escape. And then the picture is right here. I thought this place was actually really neat for it. I love this so much. Get yourself a boudoir photo of yourself in your apartment. It's an absolute bus move. <laughs> Today's the day that I'll become a plumber. I've decided that I have postponed this for long enough and now we're installing the bidet. So I have read the instructions many times over, making sure that I have everything making sure that everything is good. I am super intimidated by doing this myself, actually. Full transparency, the last time I had a bidet installed, it was my partner who did it. 
and uh, I live by myself now, so a girl just has to get up and fix her own goddamn toilet and her own goddamn toilet attachments. But we're just gonna do that, it's fine. Okay, I'll take you guys through the instructions because maybe this is going to be helpful to you if you are indeed also looking to attach your own bidet attachment. I don't know, anyway, let's go. Where are we? We need to turn off the water and it is right here, the valve. It's turned off, then I have to flush a couple of times in order to empty the tank. Oh, the sudden I'm here and emptying. As a safety measure, put down a towel. Cool beans, what do we do? Then we loosen the toilet seat. Another thing I've never done. It low-key seems like my stupid Danish toilet is different from the toilets that I used in the pamphlet, but we'll still try to figure it out. I will, however, have to uh, Google how to take off the seat. One second. Ah, okay. Today is a day of knowledge. In fact, underneath the toilet seat, underneath the... There are, there are screws, okay, like bolts, I guess. And we have to loosen those bad boys. Righty tidy, lefty loosen. There we are. Okay, so at least there is lift now. So how do we do this? What's the plan, Phil? You can prep and you can prep all you want. However, I think, I don't think this is gonna work. I, I think I need something else okay so so this is the part you're getting to connect the bidet to your water supply and the thing is it seems like the water supply is on the opposite side so it needs to go in there but the supply is over here so it has to go all the way around the toilet that's not happening like that's not happening at all I'll need to find another one of these that's longer <laughs> at least I'm doing it at least I'm doing it at least I'm not postponing it however I think I'll need to postpone it to get more supplies a girl is trying I have a lecture in Copenhagen today, so uh, I'm all packed up and let's get on the road. I know I'll 100% regret this, but uh, these will be the shoes that I'll be bringing. I'm bringing trainers as well um, for tomorrow when I'm going home, but, but I really want to wear these trousers and they are a bit too long because I am small. So I have to wear heels. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. And then we're just gonna heck discomfort. And I am sleeping in a pot capsule hostel tonight. I recently had a, an awful experience in another hostel that where it was so warm that I had to just leave and go get another hotel. That was really frustrating. Um, but this is like a bigger capsule, sort of one of those concepts. Haven't done that before, really excited, um, but that's in many, many, many hours. First of all, I have to go and give the lecture. Okay, see this? This is what I'm talking about. Small. I made it to the hostel and this is where I'll be sleeping. Not bad. Actually super spacious. Also, I have both a fan and lights and everything in here. This is just where I live now. That's fine. I don't I don't need anything else. This is all the land I need. Um changing my clothes, headed out the door. Good night from the capsule pod. I don't know. Good night. And I'm not gonna take off my makeup. Before I left for Copenhagen, I trimmed my basil and look how much they have grown! They're becoming so much more bushy, which is amazing. I'll have to trim them again, taking up the top part so they'll grow outwards instead of upwards. This is definitely in the neighborhood of what we want. This is so nice. I'm about to go for a run. I have been working from 8 and it is around 4 now, so I'm pretty, pretty beat. And one thing that the, the thing that I really want to do, to be honest, right now is just like order takeout and just sit in my bed and watch a movie. But going out for a run or a walk is so much better for me and my stupid mental health. I have so much more energy, I feel so much more prepared and just happy. And just I need to do this, even when I don't really feel like it. It doesn't have to be a long run or a long walk, but I have to go. And I'm listening to music while I go. I have my Spotify playlists uh, public, so you can go and check them out. I have everything from No One In This House Understands Me with old emo music, uh, Whore Hours, I'll not be elaborating. Then I have Born in the Wrong Decade Bops. I have Independent Bitch Bops. I have She is a Cunt 
true music fan. I have a playlist just called Danish music I never listened to. Just with Danish classics that I don't listen to. If you want to check out what I'm listening to, I'll leave a link down below. I'm just taking a break. This is an outdoor concert venue uh, in a park in Aalborg. And it's so nice here. Completely empty here, so obviously I, I have to go for it. This is it. This is what I said. This is what I said. Stupid mental health. Going outside just really helps me out a little bit when I'm sort of stressed and everything is in my head. This ah, it takes it all away. Can I also just say that something that I tend to forget when I'm in relationships, when I'm living with other people and just when I'm around other people a lot is to be embarrassing and have fun just doing whatever you want and just not caring what other people think. It's something that I tend to do, but when it comes to exercise, I tend to get like self-conscious, embarrassed, uh, that I am not at the level I want to be or not achieving the goals I want to. The thing that makes me feel like the best version of myself is when I am working out while having fun, while just doing whatever the heck, running really fast upstairs or climbing a hill for no reason or climbing a tree or going exploring something and just using my body that way. I am just so high on endorphins from just existing in that mental space because I am often in some kind of role and you sometimes when you're really busy, you end up not being in contact with the most pure version of yourself, the one that just wants to have fun and relax and be okay. And a day like this sort of reminds me how I get in touch with that side of myself. So that was just uh, way too d deep and emotional for an afternoon run, but here we are. Let's go home. Hello again. So this shirt, by the way, is my new everyday uniform. I wear it, especially at home, but basically everywhere. I, I love it. It's linen it's so comfortable i i'm very happy but today is the other thing that i have been postponing for ages that i am now doing tricking myself by filming a video about it i'll be repairing some of the clothes i've worn to death i bought this dress secondhand last summer and i've worn it so many times and i knew when i got it that i would potentially have to mend it at some point there's a little ribbon you can tie around your waist and it snapped so I'll need to sew that back in place. Then I have this skirt. You have seen me wear this skirt, I think for at least five years. This is one of my staples in my wardrobe and it started to come undone. And then I have a pair of trousers that I wear to go give lectures when I have to be a little bit more formal. I uh, cannot live without them. They're really, really great. So I, I want to look presentable when I go out. And recently, I saw that the crutch uh, is broken. Those are the things. If you have anything put aside to fix it one day, fix things with me now. I am not by any means a perfect sewer, seamstress, whatever. I am actually quite bad at things like this. But I have learned that even with mending, it's just learning by doing. And it also usually doesn't have to be perfect or even pretty. Like you can make it look pretty if that's your jam. You don't need to. I just need to put this thread into the needle. Okay, it low-key took me ages to just thread the needle, but now we're finally here. So I will be doing the majority of the work from the inside and out. So just gonna show you the problem area. Becoming kind of undone here. So I'm gonna start down here and then take it all the way back up. It's gonna be great. I think it's important to normalize just repairing things that we already have. Myself even, I often feel way too intimidated to even give it a go because I don't have a lot of experience doing these things. Um, but you also don't get experience without doing them. So it's important to just give it a go and not really care so much whether or not it's perfect, 
whether or not it'll actually hold up. If it becomes undone again, you can try one more time. And we need a better understanding of how our clothing works. I think we also need to normalize simply taking care of things. And there's no better way of doing that than just having This is not my day. My DIYs are not working out for me. I just snapped the needle in half. How can I snap the... This is what I get for finding bullshit needles in thrift stores. So now I will not be able to finish this. I'll have to go out and get another needle. <laughs> of course, no one has more than one needle. All the things I said still incredibly true. I just need to find another needle, so I'll continue this project later on. A lot of the things happening in this video, I realize, are just me postponing things. I cannot attach my bidet and I cannot repair my clothes. What kind of weird, hypocritical, environmentalist, zero waste YouTuber am I? Good evening. I spent the entire day with my mom today. We had planned thrifting and going to a museum and we just had the most amazing time visited my grandmother as well and just we had an amazing time but I also spent the opportunity when we were thrifting to find the supplies that I needed so now I have good sewing needles so I can continue with the sewing project I also found um, some thread in red because one of the things that we're repairing is indeed red so it's nice not only having black thread and also just got a neutral one. You can get everything secondhand. And today really proves that as well. So, but especially this amount of needles, I cannot possibly break all of these. That's just not happening. So now it's half past eight. I'm going to uh, take all the supplies and get into my bed and just sit there, watch something and then fix my clothes and I will show you guys the result tomorrow. I also bought this piece of paper. It's a really coarse, very rustic looking piece of paper and I want to make something with it. I decided for myself that from now on I'll be doing at least one drawing creation. I'll be doing one sort of creative project every week to stimulate my mind, mental well-being. I always feel so satisfied and happy when I'm creating something, so not only looking into a screen, because like creating videos is also creating something, but making something physical is incredibly satisfying. So I decided that once a week I'll be producing a piece of art, something, anything. I can also be like a new recipe, but I need to do something. So I love the quality of this paper, so we're definitely doing something with that, but that might be tomorrow. It's Sunday tomorrow, so it will have to be tomorrow. I'm excited for it. Now I'm going to go and fix my clothes, now that we have the proper tools to do so. So the skirt is done, this is the result. Again, you don't need to do things well in order to do them. And I think this is a testimony to that. But it's not coming undone again, that is for certain. The stitching is low-key a lot nicer on the trousers that I repaired here. So you you can see it a little bit, but it's very minimal. And when you wear them, you're not gonna you're not gonna notice at all. And on the inside, just for good measure, um it looks like this. It's a little chaotic, but it's okay. Who can relate by the way? A little chaotic, but okay. Next up will probably be a little bit more tricky, but I'll do my best. I have this dress where the ribbon came off. I was ripped off clean. So I think I'll need to first mend this and then reattach the ribbon. I think that's the way to go. This is Loki, one of my favorite dresses. So I really want this to look nice. I'll do my very best to make this look as slick as possible. Also, you will be able to see the stitching on the back all the time. So I don't want it to be too visible that it's been mended by an amateur. So was this as nice as I wanted it to be? No, absolutely not. But it works. Once again, you don't have to be good at it to do it. It's made with love, not with skill. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!